Hello class, welcome to lesson 4 of the skeletal system. Today we are going to look at part of the mammalian skeleton. I'm Miss Eugenia and Chiamenza. Let's begin. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the various parts of the mammalian skeleton. Today we are going to look at appendicular skeleton. In the previous lesson, we looked at axial skeleton. And describe also the functions of the various parts of the appendicular skeleton. So our key terms, we have appendicular, appendicular, pectoral ghetto, pectoral ghetto, pelvic ghetto, pelvic ghetto, pentadactyl, pentadactyl, metatarsus, metatarsus, radius, radius, ulna, ulna, metacarpals, metacarpals, phalanges, phalanges, humerus, humerus. So these are terms we'll come across as we are into this lesson. So today we are looking at the major part of the mammalian skeleton. Previously we looked at the axial skeleton, where we said the axial skeleton comprises of the skull and the vertebral column. So the appendicular skeleton is what attaches to this axial skeleton. So you have here the appendicular skeleton being the various limbs and limb girdles which attach to the axial skeleton. I hope you get the difference between the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Very good. So we have these parts forming the appendicular skeleton, the pectoral girdle, the pelvic girdle, the forelimbs and the hind limbs. Now with the pectoral girdle, we are looking at two parts forming the pectoral girdle. That's our shoulder region. So when you look here, you realize my Rollins chain, as we put it. That is what is known as the collarbone or the clavicle. Now the second is the scapula, the bone at this side, which forms the second half of the pectoral girdle. Now these provide a surface for attachment of muscles and they also support the arm. Now moving on, the other part of the appendicular skeleton is the pelvic ghetto. Now the pelvic ghetto is in our hip region. You can't see mine because I'm seated. Now with our pelvic ghetto, we have already looked at the vertebral column. Which part of the vertebral column is this? Yes, you are right. We have the sacral and caudal vertebrae over here. So the set of bones which attach to this caudal and sacral vertebrae is what is known as the pelvis. So the pelvis is made up of three parts. We have the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis, or the pubic bone. So the ilium, the ischium, and the pubic. Now these are three sets of bones which attach to the vertebral column at the lower region, the lower abdomen and hip region, to provide surfaces for attachment. Now remember, this part of the pelvis where is it located yes close to your reproductive organ yes so they also tend to protect the female reproductive organ at this region as well as support the hind limbs because this is where your limbs will attach for you to move freely so you see that the pelvic and the pectoral girdles are very important and they are key to ensure movement occurs now the final part of the appendicular skeleton is what we have the upper and the lower limbs which is the hind limbs and the forelimbs the forelimbs being our hands and the hind limbs being our legs now the limbs are divided into five parts now this is what we call pentadactyl limbs pentadactyl penta coming from pentagon pent five so we have the limbs divided into five parts so when you look over here at the image here you realize that this is your hand how would you know this is your hand yeah, right, because of the clavicle and the scapula. So even if I don't draw the entire human for you, you do realize that these bones belong to the upper portion of the body. So this is the lower part because of the sacrum and the pelvis shown here. Very good. So when you look at the upper part, that's the forelimb, you are looking at the set of bones being the humerus, which is a very long bone at the top over here. So the humerus is one. And then we have two bones also here, the radius and the ulna. 
Now the radius and the ulna, the ulna is much longer than the radius. Now this provides surfaces for attachment of muscles so that contraction and relaxation can bring about movement. So this is the second part of the pentadactyl system. And then we move on to the third part, which is the carpals found at this region of your body. Yes. And then the fourth part, which is the metacarpals, which is also a set of bones also found in this region. So, so you have your palm forming the metacarpals. And then you have finally your digits being the phalanges. So you have five parts, the humerus, the radius and ulna forming this region. Then you have the, the carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. Quite similarly to what we have for the forelimbs, we have the same for the hind limbs, just that with different names. So in place of the humerus in humans, we have the femur. And in place of the radius and ulna, we have the tibia and fibula, with the tibia being the longer part. Now with the carpals, we have the tarsals in place. So these set of bones are this region. You have three small bones, a smaller one bone in the middle, and then five bones here, which will move into the metacarpals here. So this small set of bones here is what is known as the carpals. And in the lower limbs, it's known as the tarsals. You get the difference? Very good. Now what branches from the carpals is what is known as the metatarsals. So you see in the upper limbs, you have the metacarpals. And in the lower limbs, you have the metatarsals. Quite similar, right? Yes. And then finally, also in the lower limbs, we have the phalanges, which is the digits. Now, this is the parts of the lower limbs we have here. Now, these are important for movement. As I said, muscles will attach. Contraction and relaxation will occur okay to bring about movement. Now, bear in mind that the weight of the body is borne on the limbs, specifically the lower limbs. All your weight stands on your limbs. So these are the various parts and functions of the appendicular skeleton. Today we looked at various parts of the mammalian skeleton. Today we looked at the appendicular skeleton. In our previous lesson, we looked at the axial skeleton. And then we also described the functions of the various parts of the appendicular skeleton. I hope you've come to understand the various parts of the skeletal system, looking at the axial and the appendicular skeleton. Very good. So on that note, I give you an assignment to state one function of each of the following parts of the mammalian skeleton. We have the skull, the vertebral column, and the pelvic girdle. So on this note, I wish you good luck and see you in our next class. Thank you.